Jesus loves us. We're going to be live just shortly. Okay. I'm not sure how to share it to Pam. We might just have to maybe put a link in Create Academy later or? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay. Because yeah, if I try to do it now, I'm not going to be <laughs> present for the... <laughs> Yeah. Well, guys, we we are live. Woo! This is Create uh, for, uh, Forum and welcome, Jen Pierce. Woo! A Thank lot of you. you need to understand, like you guys know, like I, I am so in love with Jesus. If you don't know that, you will find that out today. And one of the things that I love to do is do some lives where we focus upon a certain aspect, and we call them create forms that I believe God's highlighting right now. And music is to, is for this week. And I don't know about you, Jen, but music is a part of everything that I love. Like when my dad at the end of my life had, he had Alzheimer's, I could sing any song and he could sing it right along with me. And, and music is that, that language of, I remember during the charismatic movement, all the songs that we would sing together that then he knew as well and and just how music is a thread throughout our whole entire lives and it's just an amazing journey and for those of you that don't know we were going to have rosie gain on we love you rosie we do but, but rosie is in poland right now ministering to the the different refugees that came over from the ukraine and and just how things have been displaced there so we love you, Rosie. Rosie will be on next month. So if you want to know more about what she does in EDM music and transformation of culture, she is your girl. But today we have Jen and Jen, share a little bit about your, your background, like share a little bit about what's going on. I mean, we found each other when you joined Create Academy and I've fallen in love with what God is doing in your life. But we want to know about your your heart for music and how it converged with God. Yeah. And again, too, before I forget, if you have any questions for Jen, make sure you put that in our Facebook chat. And we would love, love, love for that to get going, too. And again, part of what we love is you growing. And so after this uh, forum group at 10 o'clock, we'll have an hour together. She's going to teach you how to create through encounters with God in music. And then after that, we're going to have you do an exercise where you create, but then from 1030 to 1130, Jen will be on with Lisa Lohmeyer and others and Pamela about how you can grow in writing a song or in encounters with God through music. And it's through my Create Academy. So you just join the monthly subscription. There's 50% off for that. And we want to see you grow and thrive. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So welcome, everybody. We're so glad that you're here, Jen. And Jen, share us, share your story with us. Yeah, so I have sung probably since before I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I love it. <laughs> I literally have, this will give away my age. I look so young and youthful, but I'm a child of the 80s, and I literally had tape cassettes that I would make, record of myself just singing random randomness, whatever, just blah. Come blah, on, blah. I love it. Um, I remember I the little, cassette little, tape. Four or five, um, and so... I, yeah, I, what you were saying about music being a language of the soul is what I was thinking as you were describing that connection between you and your dad. It's like, it's something that your soul expresses that has no bounds, right? There's, yes. no, there's no container to it. And um, yeah, so from a young age, I loved to sing. And when I was really young, I asked my parents for piano lessons. And so from a young age, I was playing piano, age six. Um, yeah, <laughs> I played too. I, I had I had music lessons in the piano too and loved it. No, I didn't like to practice. That was a problem. No, I don't I, think I don't think anybody does. Every child goes, no, no, I want to play like that. But no, I don't want to have to practice. Exactly. No. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll try to fast forward here to, to condense, you know, 23 years of my story into a, a short time frame. But basically, I loved music. I loved that language. Um, and I met Jesus at a young age at a vacation Bible school. I went with a friend and heard about Jesus and about inviting him into your heart. And I did, but I didn't have, you know, follow-up discipleship of what does that mean to live that out and walk that out. And so I just kind of was doing my own thing, had a lot of pain um, from 
just just brokenness. I think lies that I believed about my identity, shame, unworthiness, and so um, performance became my coping mechanism. You know, we each turn to different things to fill that hole. And for me, it was performance. And so a lot of that came in with music too, and mm. it becoming part of my identity, right? Trying to fill yes. that vacuum of worth that I felt. And so as I got older and I got involved with choir and, um, you know, uh, musical theater was a huge love of mine. And I was involved in all those things. And it, it was always an outlet, but there was definitely um, a lot of self and pride mixed in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, and striving to achieve um, still joy. I still to this day remember doing a project in high school um, where they had us just create, you would love this, create an art expression and then write about it. And so I created this abstract, I wish I still had it, this abstract expression. And it was me on stage my senior year. I had the lead, in it, one of the leads in the musical. And it was just such a joy. There was so much joy for me in that place. And I think it was an echo of what God has always intended for me. Right. You know, it's like, you know, his gifts and call are irrevocable. So even when we don't know him, we're walking in it to a degree, whether it's been twisted of course, without him, it's always been twisted, but it's still there at the core, the joy that's in well, it. It talks about like the gifts of God are irrevocable. In other words, it doesn't matter. I mean, and we all know that, like, I mean, there's beautiful, like, um, musicians that have a heart to sing. And when they sing, you can feel that they, they actually have an anointing that God gave them, but they're not Christians yet. Yeah. Or they're, they're not in, pro they don't, they haven't chosen that route. And and it's a gift that we just like love and we, and it, it makes us come alive because we're like David when he played and the demon left Saul, there's a, there's something that happens when you're anointed with the presence of God that kind of shifts and changes everything. But there's little secrets that God gives us along the way to point us in that direction. I remember I must've been five or six and my mom took me, my parents took me to a musical and I'm going, well, I feel like every, every part of my body was alive. Like, I love this. I love this. I want this all the time. Can we do this all the time? And it's just that, that passion that if you're, if you're experiencing that, that's just because you're called to, to see the beauty of how music and fashion and art play, play a story in a script. Yeah. And it's just powerful. So you felt that when you were in high school. I did. And then wow. um, around that same time in my senior year, a friend took me to a passion play, a musical theater <laughs> mm, play, come on. The Life of Jesus. And of course, I knew about Jesus. I went to church on Sundays, but I didn't have a relationship with the Lord. It was really a religious practice um, for me. And so, um, yeah, just watching Jesus on the cross, which I knew he had been there, but it was this event in history that didn't really apply to my life. But as I'm watching him hang on the cross, I had this encounter with the Lord. I started weeping and the Lord said, wow. spoke, spoke to my heart. I did this for you because I love you. Wow. And I was completely undone. I was standing in the back of this huge charismatic church, standing room only, thousands of people that would come to see this play every year. And the pastor gets up and gives an altar call. And I'm sitting there with my religious self going, <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. How can I go forward? But this young woman came up to me. I found out later she was part of the youth group and she held out her hand. This is a word to people listening to the impact we can make. She said, if you want to go forward, I'll go with you. So she saw me out of that crowd of thousands and she Whoa. came up to me, and invited me. If you want to go forward, I'll go with you. So I went up and I surrendered my life to Jesus. And that Ooh, was, come on, Jen, that is yeah. so cool. I was 17, surrendered my life. And it was like, definitely a light switch flipped. Like all of a sudden I was like, Whoa, what? And I started reading the Bible for the first time and just wanting to pray and wanting a relationship with the Lord. And so, um, yeah, that kind of embarked on my relationship with the Lord, but that performance stuff came crashing in, in my relationship with the Lord. And so even though my encounter came from love and he was saying, I love you, I struggled so much with feeling condemnation and unworthy and all this stuff, right. From my past <laughs> yeah. and, and relating that to the Lord. And yeah. so really it wasn't until I was, so actually I put music on a shelf for a while because I felt so much pride and self tied in with it. And I just wanted to mm -hmm. worship. So I just kind of uh, shelved that whole being on stage thing for a while. Cause I didn't know how to do it with a pure heart. And so I was afraid, really, I was afraid of, of tainting that 
I just love to be with him. I just love to sing with him. And I didn't want to um, mix anything in with it. And for many years, I just, it was just, you know, in, in a congregation, I would go to a Thursday night worship on the Christian campus I went to and just sing my heart out. And um, yeah, so there was about, I don't know, six years, seven maybe, that I just laid it down. It was just me I, and Jesus in the I, I feel like I just want to camp on that a little bit because it is, it's so true. It's like, guys, we, we come from a background where if, if we, it's with, it was a gift that obviously Jen, you had and a passion that you had as well. And so you, it's like, we, we, we can at times compartmentalize our life. And so Jesus is over here not purity, but what I love over here is it, it, that could take away from the Lord. And if you were raised in that kind of environment or belief system, the Lord wants to set you free today. I mean, woohoo! I yes. teach this on create Academy, which you know about it's the sacred versus the secular. And yeah. I remember when I was at, at Bethel, and taught there in my create uh, my create track, track for 19 years in the school of ministry. People had that we you know had that same philosophy. Well, I'm coming to Bible College, BSSM, in order to get holy. But my my music, my fashion, my film, that's unholy. That's like that's not as important. I'm going, no, that's not true because what you love and your passion for music that came from God. I mean, David didn't say, oh gosh, I'm seeking the Lord, so I can't do my music. No. He said, no, I'm, I'm, when I'm with Jesus, my music is speaking and, and touching so many people, which we see with I happen and, and so many other things that, that David had really brought an influence into at, at certain times. And so for you that have felt like it's separated or that it's unholy because you weren't walking with God when you did that, we just break that off yeah. of you. Jen and I just yeah. say no. And, um, and just share, share in the little Facebook chat, how you're doing with that? Because the team would love, love, love Lisa would love, love, love and Pam to, to pray for you and Rosie, because that just, uh, it's, it's a defeating mindset because why would God give you a gift unless he wanted you to use it for him? I mean, there's, it doesn't make sense. It's like a child, like you wouldn't say that to your child, right? In the same way, God doesn't want you to go around feeling like you're out less than because of that. So, so you had an epiphany. So for six years, you yeah. did do the correlation. Wow. Yeah. I, um, I, yeah, I was afraid that my own pride was going to, I don't know. I just didn't want to, um, uh, have that mixture in my intimacy with him. Right. And so finally, um, fast forward, I met my wonderful now husband and he was actually my biggest champion besides Jesus, Jesus, number one, <laughs> my husband okay. number two. the year we got married, he's like, we need to get you a piano. And I was like, I haven't played piano since I was 14. I, I quit taking lessons when I was 14. And he was like, no, we, we really need to get you a piano. And I was like, well, what? And we would just kind of go around for several weeks. He would just keep bringing it up. We need to get you a piano. And I'm going, why? Why would we spend all that money? What if I don't even use it? I don't know how to play anymore. Um, so he, we did. We bought me a piano. And the Lord started speaking to me about just come play. Just come play. And come on. So I remember feeling extremely frustrated because I had learned sight reading and classical piano. So I could, I could sit down and sight read something. But I had all this music in my head that I couldn't get out mm -hmm. as I was learning. So I started learning chords and how to build chords and play spontaneously. And I would hear it in my mind and sit down to play and just feel this huge block. It was so frustrating. It was like trying to learn how to walk again when you already knew how to run. And right. just the frustration of it. So I remember I had this moment one day in the practice rooms on campus. We worked at a college campus. So I was playing the piano in the practice rooms and I was so frustrated. And so I just knelt down and I was like, Lord, I can't do this. And I felt like he spoke so gently to me, Jen, stop trying to make it sound like something. Just worship me. Come just on. Me. That'll I preach really, right I there. That will the preach. Piano, and I, can't do that. <laughs> I sat down and I started playing. Now Woo! would I wanted to do a concert? No, I don't know that it sounded fabulous, but I did. It was like, I was able to start making those chords because it was worship. I'm going to worship you and not try to make this sound like something. Wow. And, and that to me is kind of the key of, of my DNA in music that I always keep coming back to. Um, and that's why I say that I create out of encounter is because that's, that's my sweet spot. That's where it all comes from is as I'm encountering the Lord and worshiping him, then it just flows from that place. I love that. I, I think 
<clears throat> it's kind of like you came back to your authentic self. And yeah. for those of you that uh, I've, there's certain things that I love, but one of those things is I love Anne of Green Gable. So I might be quoting some stuff like that, but this is what uh, I love. She was in that point where she was just trying so hard to be something she wasn't by these uh, romantic like stories that she was writing and that were really superfluous, which means they were just like, um, th they were just about like fluff. They weren't about who real characters and her friend Gilbert said, why don't you write about the things that you know and write about Avonlea where you're from. And, and she was so mad because, well, why, that's just ordinary. And, and yet that's what she needed to do to write her book. And in the same way, what, that's what you're talking about. Like be genuine with your heart for God, what he's called you to do and be your authentic self and don't try and be somebody else because it always ends up not feeling, it feels artificial. Like when you taste fruit and it's like, this doesn't taste right mm -hmm. in the same way people want the real you. And so if you love EDM, get going yes. and play EDM and let God's presence come upon you. If, if you love country, do that kind of music, but be authentic to where, where you are and God's going to use that. So we really, really, I, I love this story because you found yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And that, and that, um, the, the love of music and the passion that was in there ever since I was bitty, 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 finally found its fullest expression. And so I love what you just said, Teresa, no matter what your flavor is, like later on in this time when we're going to create, um, my flavor is going to be different than your flavor, but don't, don't try to find someone else's flavor, find yours and the fullness of that expression when it meets God is it's a nuclear bomb. It's an explosion in, in the atmosphere. I mean, it shifts, it shifts things. We may never see this side of heaven when we allow the fullness of what he's put in us to encounter the fullness of who he is and let it out. It's like, come on, love it. There's explosion. some comments, comments here. Jesus says, just worship me. Don't make it sound like something. Yes. I love that. Please let us know about what you feel about these comments too. Rosie says, so good to be authentic from a place of intimacy. Yeah. We're, yeah. That, I mean, I think that's part of it, isn't it? It's like, there's something about intimacy with God that breathes in authenticity. Like we can't, because we'll always be trying to be something else, but when we feel that security and who God has created us to be and we're that and we, we create out of that, then it just changes everything. So, um, so I'm going to pray right now before we get going on this next part, but I pray right now that you would find your authentic self. I pray wherever you are at, if, if you are listening and it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, it doesn't matter. Even if you know the Lord, he's calling you into a place of being intimate with him, of knowing him to say, Jesus, who am I to you? And what is my, my musical sound? What is the sound that you want me to create in who I am? And we just release Jesus to come in and to show you who you are. And he could show you places in your life that have been maybe like just squelched because of performance or fear of failure. And he's just saying, let go of that shell, get out of the prison and let me show you who you are as you just worship me. And so we just pray for a shift and a change. We break off performance, the fear of making mistakes, the fear of maybe you've judged your voice or who you are by listening to secular or Christian music. And you go, well, I could never sound like this person or I could never play like this person. And the Lord said, I, did, I never wanted you to, I want you to be you. And so we break off any kind of mold that has made you feel like you had to be something to be successful or to be valued. And we just release you out of that prison in Jesus name. Amen. So uh, one of the things that's just happening right now, is kind of like what you just talked about, Jen, when that woman tapped you and said, Hey, I, I'll go up there with you. If you want to, there's an invitation. I feel like God's giving people right now, Jen, to let go of performance, let go of the fear that go of maybe what a music teacher said or a parent said about a voice or about music, whatever it is. And to find out why God loves music and why you're a part of that journey. And so we just give you freedom in that. Um, Chris Tracy says, just play. My guitar is waiting for me. Oh, I love it. 
That's what God said about you, Chris. Come on. Share about what God said about you guys. We want to hear it in the post. Yay, Jesus. This is what it's all about, guys. God wants to speak to us about the power of our music. Um, I wanted to just invite you, Jen, to share any testimonies now, anything that you have that that you feel like, oh my gosh, this is what happened and this was a, a life transforming or this is when I played and something happened. So go ahead and share some testimonies. And again, yes. any questions for Jen, please let us know. So really what's on my heart to share is this testimony and it, it's two sides of one coin. Don't try to push yourself out ahead of God's timing. And also when he says it's time, don't hold back. Oh, good. Come on. So with that thing that we're talking about, about intimacy with the Lord and encounter with him and knowing how he sees you and creating out of that place. Um, I had an incubation phase for a long time, probably, I don't know, um, upwards of 10 years of me in my living room with my husband and Jesus and just playing my heart out. And I'm also an intercessor. So I do a lot of singing intercession as well. And so that was kind of my womb <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where, where I grew and developed. And then, um, gradually the Lord started opening doors, um, for that to go out. And so, you know, our women's pastor approached me in 2012. Would you come lead a song at, at the women's event? And then Woo! in 2015, becoming part of the worship team at church. And then, um, it was like, as I, as I was in that secret place with the Lord, then he opened the doors um, in front of me and, and then we've got to walk through them. So yeah, yeah I feel like um, for my testimony then is to always keep that secret place first, whether you're in the waiting period of waiting for something to open up that's a dream in your heart or whether you're in the fulfillment yeah. period that he's saying now go, to always keep that secret place first because it's the fuel that we live off of and that sustains us and that releases encounter to others as we as we create um and so yeah testimonies about that even just in the past year the lord has launched out a facebook live venture with a ministry that i love yeah that's called help club for moms if there's any moms out there it's a fabulous um ministry of discipleship and encouragement and equipping for moms and so i do a facebook live worship time on wednesdays um that what one's probably that for people so that they know say that again what's the time for that so that people could join you jen that's at 9 a.m mountain time so colorado mountain time and every wednesday and um yeah i would love to have you guys join it's on the help club for moms main page on facebook just look up help club for moms and i do that on wednesdays and that one has been um maybe i'll share that testimony because it's been the one that i wouldn't have chosen <laughs> Right. I love it. I have not been a lover of social media. Um, I, I do love it. It has such a huge impact, but I haven't been heavily involved in social media. I didn't know how to use Facebook. I didn't know how to do any of it. And it was like, the Lord was like, Jen, go, go, go. And so my husband, again, was one of my biggest cheerleaders and my friend Deb, that um, is one of the founders of the ministry. She was a huge cheerleader, is a huge cheerleader for me on that. Um, but just that testimony of, um, when the Lord says go, don't hold back because then doors have opened. I'll share this just on a personal level. Um, it even has connected me with people that I haven't talked to in years that find it on Facebook. And um, they say this, ble it's, it's always the Lord's timing. This blessed me. It was exactly what I needed to hear. I was going through grief and I found your, your Facebook live and was able to be encouraged by the Lord. And it's like, I would have missed out on that if I had gone out of my preferences. It wasn't my preference to do social media. <laughs> I know. I love it. Well, well, I think Jen, it's kind of like what, what happened to me and what I'm doing on this, this Facebook live, but also on create Academy is like, there's, there's a community that we can build where we don't have to be like next to one another in a physical location to have community, which, uh, when COVID hit, I think we all were going what am I going to do now? Like, I think because we were so dependent upon the, the local body and it's like what you talked about. It, it forced me out of that place of just thinking about the people that I knew personally and into a place of, Oh my gosh, you're touching people all around the world, Jen, through your Facebook live, uh, through this and, and people are getting touched. So yeah. So 
we'll post that in our Facebook link so that people can find out more about that. That's just so super important. Um, hey, we have a couple of things too that people have commented on. I love this. Uh, let's just, uh, Lorraine says, singing should come from the posture of your heart, not performance. Yes, Lorraine makes me feel uncomfortable. Yes, that's right. It should come from the posture of your heart. Um, there's nothing as embarrassing. And I, I think that Lisa Lohmeyer, um, who I, I believe is on, understands that there's nothing like, I asked her in, in a, at this retreat that we were having in Tennessee to sing prophetically uh, over a person for healing. And it was beautiful. That person got healed, but well, it was a risk for her because she had never done that before, but she, what I loved about Lisa is she just concentrated upon the Lord and everybody in the whole entire room was like, Oh, oh I just felt the presence. It's because of what you talked about, it's because we're focusing upon the presence of God. And she wasn't trying to sing to be perfect. She wasn't trying to sing to make herself feel valuable. She already was. And so that just changed everything. Lisa, great job. Um, Brunel says, keep the secret place first. Yes, Brunel, what you shared, Jen, is perfect. It's our feel for the, for the day. Yes, 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 yes. What I love about this thing too, just, and I want you to camp on this, is like, share, share how music is, has carved out your time with God. Because I, I believe that a lot of people, and this is just me, but you know me now, Jen, but it's like when I, when I play or sing or when I create my art, it's like I'm carving out that time with God, but I'm expressing his love in a, in a creative way that actually builds this foundation of a relationship versus like, it's not a task. It actually is building up my communication with God, but um, share about that because that's a huge thing about how you have built encounters with God through your music that people need to know about. Like, number one, what is your process? How do you do that? Because that might be foreign to a lot of people that might not have been raised with understanding that they can actually speak to God. So kind of go through that and um, let us in on that. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's, it's my favorite place. <laughs> it is. Um, and, and I, let me just say this too be willing for it to be uncomfortable at first, because I will say that it was a struggle internally. I don't know if everyone would feel that way or not, but I just want to put it out there that when I first started carving out that time to spend with the Lord on the piano and singing, um, it actually was really hard and it was an uphill battle. Actually, um, maybe you wouldn't think it would be, but I found that I encountered a lot of walls and blockage and barriers that I had to persevere and press through. And sometimes I just wanted to give up. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes, um, and, and two, it, it, now it's a place where I find so much healing. But in the mm -hmm. early days when I first started carving out the time, I would come face to face with my pain when I went to create. Mm. So when I would sit down at the piano, because it's like as you go to create, whether it's art or music, parts of your soul start unfolding. And there were some really unhealed parts of my soul with a lot of pain. And it was like, I would come face to face with it when I would sit down and open up my heart to sing. And that was hard. So I just want to say that, first of all, don't give up. <laughs> and yes. if it doesn't feel good at first, don't give up. I feel like it's been, um, I really do compare it to weightlifting. I'm not much of a weightlifter physically, but when I have had periods in my life where I've done some weightlifting, light, light weightlifting, <laughs> yeah, like, me no too. One, I never felt like, great, I'm going to go lift some weights. It was like, okay, I'm going to make myself go do this. And as you do it, it gets, you build that strength and it gets easier. And so now after 17 years of building that muscle, when I go to the piano, I, I hit a chord and I go right into the presence, but it wasn't, it did not start that way. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just want to say that, that you've got to, um, that encouragement to give yourself room and space for it to maybe be uncomfortable, for it to feel dry sometimes. And still to this day, um, when I go to do my Wednesday morning live worship, I wake up and it's the last thing I want to do. I'm thinking in my flesh, man, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. I would like to um, do something else, but it's that, that choice, right? To 
to go and do it. And then always the joy follows for me now. Um, but yeah, I would say it's a muscle that we build over time and we we learn to to find joy in his presence and drink from the river of his delight, like it says in Psalms. It's like a place, like you said, that gets carved out through intentionality, setting aside the time to do it and doing it even if it's not easy or fun at the moment. And then really like the, then it's like you said, I have this like treasure trove that I feel like I can dive into now that I've built, but it didn't start that way. It definitely was a building block by building block, choice by choice to be in his presence. Yeah. I love that. I feel like, um, you know, part, and this is so good, Jen, that, that people are hearing this story because it's so good. Uh, a part, part of the process for everybody right now is like, Jesus is calling to you and he, he wants you to express your love and express who you are. But it's sometimes you're in that awkward season with a loved one where, you know, you have issues or you don't know what to say, or you're just building that relationship. But then you start to learn their love language. You start to learn the way that they think. And music is the love language that obviously you had since you were young. And that's the process of you blending your life with, with, with your, the lover of your soul, Jesus. And, and guys, I just want to encourage you to like, there's, there's people that want to coach you along the way. There's people like Lisa and Jen that want to coach you and create Academy along the way. I mean, I remember so many times, uh, Jen, when, uh, I wasn't sure, um, should I continue doing create Academy? Should I continue? And people are going, Oh my gosh, yes, Teresa, this is happening in my life. That's happening because of your yes. And because of what you're doing. And, and so that's what we want you to focus upon is like, there's something that God's doing in your heart, but that thing inside of your heart will, will produce fruit in your relationship with your husband, your wife, your kids, whatever. I mean, Lisa, you know that like the, the testimony of what has happened because you've taken that time to be awkward in your relationship <laughs> with God, you know, and, yeah. and playing or whatever it's led you to deeper conversations with him and a deeper understanding in how to love others well. And so, um, it, music is another language of the heart, like art, like, um, dance, like other things. And so, we need to learn to be playing and, and you're going to like flub up. I mean, there's no, if your partner dancing, you're, you're not going to get it right the first time. And in the same way with music, when you're dancing with Jesus, in a sense, with, with notes and with uh, words, it, it's like, it, it can become like stale or insecure, but then as you grow, it gets easier and it flows. And I just want to say, guys, what would have happened if, David hadn't read, um, written songs, which were his, his music. I mean, guys, I, that's where I camp on. I read Psalms every day and it just changes you. Um, I think we have a couple, couple wonderful comments here. Hold on. Uh, thanks for sharing your experience of it being hard to do at first and to press on. I haven't found the time on the piano with father God to be for it to be fun or easy all the time. And I walk away from it. Ooh, that's so good. What would you say to them, Jen? Yeah. Um, grace. <laughs> grace. Gosh, we need so much of it. Um, yeah. And so I just speak that even over um, the one that's written that, but over all of us that's listening for us to receive. Lord, we just choose to receive grace right now in the places where it's been hard, where it is hard. We ask you to unlock, take your grace as a key and unlock parts of us so we don't give up <laughs> in Jesus name. Yeah, because yeah. it is, it's that temptation to give up because it's hard or maybe you've set a goal and you haven't met that goal. You know, you told yourself I'm going to do five or excuse me, an hour a day, five days a week or whatever it might be. And you haven't. And so then you don't want to because it's, you're going face to face with that failure, quote unquote. So yeah, the grace to, um, not look at ourselves as failures, but look at ourselves learning to walk. And when my kids learned how to walk, I wasn't mad at them for falling. I was just excited that they were learning to walk. Come and, on. And I think of that a lot um, in my relationship with the Lord that I feel his heart now. I couldn't feel this earlier in my relationship with the Lord when I still had all that condemnation and shame, but I just feel his heart that he's like, come on, Jen, you're doing so good. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. 
So I know he's so he it's like if we really knew I think it boils down to too if we really knew Papa God, like yeah. I, I think that part of the issue is like we still look at him as a stern father or you like you need to measure up like you need to like wait my son did that and you're just doing that or you mean you didn't pray that long if you mean right. you haven't and so we have the idea of papa god being critical or being yeah. um like a perfectionistic father when he's not and when you look at it he's just like a good father that says come on jen you played for five minutes yeah. I love that you're making, yeah. you're taking time to take a rest. So just picture Papa God, just loving you, not condemning you. Yeah. But helping and, you grow. And always inviting us back for the one who wrote that comment that he's always saying, Oh, I love spending time with you. Just come spend a little time with me. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Uh, the rain says the Lord heals, restores and delivers us through his music. Amen. Woo, good Amen. comment. Well, I, I'd love for you to talk about the demo that we're going to do. And uh, I'm so excited about this. So go, share about that, Jen. Yeah. So, and remind me, Teresa, how long are we doing the demo? How long? For is 10 it? minutes. Okay. Yeah. So um, what I want to do is take some time to invite you along with me as I do what I do when I'm at home with the Lord. Um, and so basically the steps that I'll usually take is I'll sit at the piano. I'll, I'll just kind of take a moment and quiet my heart. Sometimes I breathe. If you watch my Facebook videos, I'm often breathing in the beginning, like deep breath, breathe in the things of God, breathe out everything else, just centering myself on um, the Lord because we have, you know, bodies, minds, emotions that can be all over the place. And so I just kind of center myself. And then, um, Depending what I'm doing that day, today I'm just going to choose a chord. I might choose F, and I'll just start on a chord. And really what I do <laughs> is I, um, I was telling Teresa, it's almost like surfing where I'm waiting for the wave. So I'll just wait on that chord until I feel the presence of the Lord, and then I'll sing a little bit. I'll change to a different chord. Um, for me, it's kind of a flow and an interaction with the Lord. And then as I get going in that, sometimes I have a prophetic song that I'll sing or a phrase. Um, and that's, that's kind of how my encounters flow when I'm going spontaneous. And I'd like to do that today. Just go with Ooh. the spontaneous flow. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to invite you after, after she demos, we're going to invite, I'm going to have her play for five minutes after that, and then just have you create with God. It could be that he gives you a song. It could be that he gives you a melody. It could be that um, he's, he's helping you to understand a mystery. I mean, part of, part of this thing is when we, and this is for everybody out there when we, um, and did we find that out with Psalms, but when, when you let go and you kind of get out, what's really going on in your heart, then God comes in and, uh, and he, you're able to hear from him. So music or art or dance, uh, or writing helps you to get into the flow and then you kind of let go like the dance, like the wave, and then you're able to relax and then you're able to hear him. It's like, I'll give you an example. When you're in a wave, a physical wave, uh, <laughs> it's like you, you lose all sense of like, uh, time what's going on and you're just, the, the wave is taking you. So it's not just you, right? but you're in the wave and the wave has the power to do what it wants, uh, wreck your hair, uh, pull you under. I mean, to do. So when, when we worship what Jen is talking about, she's being pulled in this wave with, with the presence and she's not sure which direction she's going to go. So she might go really deep. She might go be fun and surf the wave. She, she's just like figuring out what is Papa God saying and what can they partner together in? to do that. So I'm going to pray and then she's going to lead you on this demo. So father, woo, we're so excited for Jen, just to take us into a place through this encounter with you, where we see the power of what it means to just get lost in an encounter with you and Papa God, we just pray for this to overshadow us so that we can do the same. So we just release your presence upon Jen in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, go for it, Jen. Okay. So I'm going to say out loud what I'd usually be saying in my mind, which is, Holy Spirit, come.
So what I'm doing right now, so I can give you guys a window into <laughs> the process, as I was singing that note, I was feeling like the Lord was reminding me, it's not about, again, it's not about what it sounds like. There's actually frequencies sometimes that he wants us to release that shift atmospheres. And I felt like that was a frequency. And that was why I kind of held back on the piano and I was just singing that sustained note because that was a frequency that I was feeling And to me, this is kind of like playing in the waves now. <laughs> We're just playing in the waves. <laughs> And then I keep um, a recording device by my piano, just again as a way of like demo instruction of what I do. Um, when I first started out, it was my husband's phone. We just recorded on his phone. Um, then we got a recorder that we attached to the piano and now we use a whole uh, mixer board and computer. But even if you just use your phone, what I used to do is I would as I was learning new worship songs, I would sing worship songs, and then as I was in the flow, Spontaneous would come, and I would know that it was gonna come, and I would hit record. And so I probably have 150 songs that I've recorded over the past 10 years. And then you can take the prophetic that's released and soak in it, share it with others. Actually, some of those have been what have gotten us through tough seasons when the Lord will release prophetic song through encounter and we recorded it and we would just play it over and over and over again what the Lord was saying over our season. Wow. Come on, Jen. I don't know about you, but I was taking somewhere else. If, if you loved it, please comment on that and, and really like, let God come in because it was so powerful, Jen. Um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to have you go on an encounter. So I'm just going to have Jen probably pray, but before we do that, I'm just going to lead you into a time when uh when papa god wants to take you into a place of an encounter with him 
And all you have to do when, if you've never really had an encounter, you just close your eyes and you let God's presence come upon you. That means that you just like you, you open up, you just like, let your imagination go. You don't worry. You don't stress. And you just like, let him lead you into a place through the music that it might come into like a chorus that might come to you, or it might be something to where a word of freedom, or it might be a frequency, like what Jen, you release, but he's just going to start to do that and just start to just maybe sing out loud, whatever it is that you want. And this is going to be a five minute encounter. And then we're going to um, be answering questions at the end. So, so go ahead, close your eyes, just relax. And Jesus, we just ask for you to come Papa God, come to each person who is here right now, who will be listening to this and who is right now. And Jesus share with us um, about who the father is, who is he? Why is it important that we meet Papa God? Why is it that you came? Just let Jesus minister to you. And then out loud, everywhere around, wherever we are, just say, Papa God, will you show me what you feel about me through music? What is it to, that you love? And you might sing my daughter, my son, but he just wants to reveal to you right now during this session about um, his delight over you as his child. So we're going to take five minutes now and just let Jen play. And then just create with him and, and just begin to write it down, begin to, you can sing it whatever way that you want, record it and just let him come upon you. Okay, this is your five minutes now just to start and just to create.
Wow, come on. Woo, Jen. Oh my gosh. If you got a chorus or if you were feeling something, please, we really want to know. This is our time to share about what did God say? Uh, I, I kept. I kept getting this word in my own life because obviously we all, we all participate. We all are in this journey. He goes, you restore every broken place in me. Um, words will guide you in my heart. Um, my heart will give you breath. Um, you are enough. Never have you been alone. I am with you till the end. Now come and dance with me. Lift your hand in mine. Feel the presence leading you in. Uh, deeper still into the place of peace. So just wow. like, you know, I mean, hey guys, like, I, I don't know about you, but I did not waste a moment of you playing, of you beginning that process of hearing his presence come in. And so this is our time to share our breakthrough. If you got a breakthrough, if something happened during those five minutes of just complete, utter abandonment toward him, we really want to you to, to share that with us. So go ahead. Let us know that because this is so vital for us to see how he's moving. I love those lyrics. I could hear melody with them. Yeah, I know you probably could write that in a matter of seconds, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's the power of what happens when we we're blending in. It's kind of like, the brush strokes of an artist with the palette, with the colors, it's like the, the melody and the, the movement of the instruments. And then the, the, the lyrics that they all blend together to tell this story, this beautiful story of encounter with the Holy spirit. Yeah. Um, but what were you sensing during the time? Were you feeling like there was a breakthrough that people were having? How were you doing? Oh, wow. The peace. I just felt such deep peace. Um, and just the, the invitation of the dance, <clears throat> I often think of, um, I love to dance. And when you're dancing with a partner who is leading you, you feel the invitation without words. There's a, there's a pull that their body language communicates to you. And it, I was feeling that in the song, that, that pull from the Lord of come. Let me lead you this way in the dance. Let me take you deeper here. Yeah, that, I don't know how else to put that into words, but it's that nonverbal <laughs> language yes. of the Lord, heart to heart, where he pulls us in. Yeah. He's oh my gosh, it's so powerful. Um, Lorenzo says, ascending hope is what I heard from the Father. Ooh, ascending, ascending help. hope. That is beautiful, Lorenzo. I love that. Lorraine says, yes, I can connect with this, Jen. The palms of my hands. Um, are burning. Yeah, that's just the presence of God. So when we, you know, part of part of what's happening right now is learning God's ways of communicating to us. So that's what you're talking about with the ascending peace, Lorenzo, what you're feeling, Lorraine, is just this burning in your hands. It's just like God, it's an invitation that God wants to, to play with us. And our senses are a part of it. It's like, um, it's like, sometimes we, we compartmentalize God, but God is a God that, that speaks to us. I mean, the wind blows and we feel his, we feel his presence. Like, um, we see the waves and it brings us to a point of peace. Like the, the music plays and it brings us to a point of engagement. That's all a part of the dance that you're talking about. Like Jen and, and Jen share about, Jen, share about your heart. Like, because you've been doing these focus groups, what is your heart for people that want to get into a group in Create Academy and learn to grow in their music? So share your heart for that. Yeah, I think my heart is, um, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but just that idea that we each have our own flavor, our own DNA, however you want to phrase that. And that as we get into groups, we can glean from each other and be strengthened and almost go higher, not because we're trying to sound like each other, but it's like we pull pieces of each other's puzzle into our own. I do feel like the Lord connects us so intentionally with when he orders our footsteps. It's not by accident when you're in a certain group or that you got connected with 
this forum today or that you're part of Create Academy, like whatever your puzzle pieces are, he directs our steps. And so, yeah, my heart is that we would be able to connect not to sound like someone else or become something else, but to become more fully us because it's that expression, you know, when it's, when Paul, was it the Romans, the letter to the Romans that he said, the earth is groaning for the sons and daughters to be revealed. And that's us. There's a groaning in the earth saying like, come into fullness. We need your fullness for redemption to come forth. And so, yeah, yeah, I think there's, there's so much power that God is is releasing and is going to continue release to release as us, we, as the sons and daughters, come into that fullness to be able to bring his kingdom. Um, and so in the small groups, I think it's a safe place where we can, you know, begin putting out there, I have this dream or I have this next step that I'm feeling and I just need support to get there. And so that's what excites me is us becoming full, more full of who God made us to be um, and stepping out in it and releasing it in a, in a safe, encouraging environment. So good. I love that. Uh, so Jen, I, I just have uh, I've so enjoyed you and I've so enjoyed hearing your story and your music and what you are releasing was so powerful today. I don't know about you guys, but just comment on that because that was just breathtaking. I, I felt like I was on an encounter. I didn't want it to end by the way. I felt like, no, keep playing. Don't we have another hour? Um, Lisa Lomar. Okay. She goes, um, this is what Pam said. I was stressed. I was on the stress side. I saw a mare in a beautiful green field uh, with wildflowers, enjoying the feel of the wind. Then a young colt came to join her and they snuggled together. Peace and joy. That's a beautiful picture. Oh my gosh. I love that, Pamela. That's beautiful. Um, if this is your encounter with God, I mean, it's going to be different. I mean, if you read Psalms, they're, they're never the same. They're they're because they're in a relationship where they're continuing to grow and pouring out uh, their heart. And so it's just powerful. So we want to encourage you, if you love this and you are not a part of Create Academy, please join it. We have a special discount. It's uh, You just go to TeresaDedman.com, scroll down to Create Academy, and um, just put subscribe for the first month. It's only 50, it's 50% off. So you just put 2020 uh, focus 2022 in there. Um, they'll put that in the chat for you and then you get 50% off and why not try? It's only 12, 12 bucks to try this out this month and look at all of our, what we do. You get access to all of my e-courses. You get access to me live every single Thursday with you. You get access to, to so many different things, Facebook, uh, the, the focus groups coming up. And so the focus group will start at 1030. The link will be sent to you in the dashboard and you'll be able to join at 1030 with Lisa and with Jen and uh, with wrote with others. And you'll be able to see what God has for you. So um, I'm going to pray and then I'm going to have Jen pray, but yay, Jesus. So Papa God, we, I feel like there's so much energy right now of peace that's here and just your presence and Papa God, we pray that we could help others grow in their creative dreams with music in our focus groups at 1030. I pray for my wonderful Creative Academy students that have joined God, that they would just grow, but then others would join in with this as well, so that we could see a mighty army of musicians rise up in a collective to see your presence come that don't want to try and perform or fear uh, making a mistake, but actually are creating out of joy and out of love. So we just prophesy that over you in Jesus name. Amen. And then Jen, go for it. Yeah, God, we love you. And we thank you. We just receive all that you're pouring out this morning. And I just want to especially pray, um, for that burning in the hands. It reminded me of times I've actually received prayer, um, that the Lord would anoint my hands and teach me to play. And it's based out of the scripture in the Old Testament when it says that the Lord had anointed skilled workers to build the tabernacle down to the little intricate details of the cubit inch or cu- uh, cubic measurement. And so, Lord, I just pray right now you're anointing on hands 
and on voices that you would teach your singers, your psalmists, your instrumentalists, your musical evangelists, your, there's, there's more labels I, I, I'm not thinking of, that you would literally train our hands, train our voices, train us in the instruments that you have for us with a supernatural Holy Spirit anointing that we would be able to play beyond our own ability um, yeah, to usher in your presence and your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Well, Jen, thanks again for joining. And um, come to Create Academy and join at 1030 with the focus group and learn. Check out the link below. If you're not in Create Academy, check out the discount. And uh, we'll see you in a month. And we just want to encourage you that the, the tip for this month is to just practice encounters with God. Practice five minutes, if it's just five minutes a day, just letting, um, turning on some music or, or creating some music and then just letting God flow inside of you and then just write out what he says or sing what he says and, uh, and see God's presence come and then share with us testimonies next month. Blessings, everybody. See you soon. Bye, Jen. Bye. Thanks, Teresa. Bye, everyone.